Let's get this into a little bit better shape from an artistic perspective. I'll store that image for reference and minimize the render view. Select my particles, go to the attribute editor, control A, and in the particle shape node, we want to adjust the creation expression values. I'll right click on radius PP and choose creation expression. And here are my random values for the size of the particles. Let's try a value between 0.1 and 0.5. And as for the color, I'll leave that as it is now. Click Edit. Rewind and play that back. See what that looks like in the rendering. Much smaller particles compared with what we had a moment ago. We need more of them, and probably brighter. So to add more, we'll go back to the emitter node. Particles per second, I'll set that to maybe 200 instead of 50. Rewind. Give it another render. Back in my expression editor, I can perhaps increase the amount of green and blue to make the particles brighter. Let's try a value of 0.5 as a maximum value for green and blue. Edit. And render. So that's a little bit better. I'm going to add some glow in a moment, but I think I've got them about the right size and the right color. If you want the particles to fade out over time, you can go back into the shader. And in fact, while I'm here, I should give this a name like Fairy Dust Shader. And hit Enter. If I want them to fade out over time, I want to add something in this Life Transparency section here. So you'll see Incandescence has got a connection because we added the Particle Sampler Info node. And strangely, the Life Incandescence appears to have a connection too. So that's a bit misleading. But we've added incandescence here on a per particle basis, and that's simply connected to the particle's ID. Transparency here, life transparency, is going to be connected not to the particle ID, but to the particle lifespan. What I need to do here is add a ramp. And I can once again go to the Create Render Node button for life transparency, and just a standard ramp. Now it doesn't take you to the ramp attributes by default, it takes you to another particle sampler info node. But you can get to those ramp attributes fairly easily. Just go to the output connection here in the attribute editor a couple of times, and that'll take you up through the shader tree to the ramp node. You could of course go through the hypershade and select it there too. What we see here is the transparency over time. And currently, this has got the default red, green, and blue color swatches here. What we want here, just to simplify things, is just black and white, because a grayscale is appropriate to the transparency in this case. This is actually going to be tinting the particles. So rather than have it be tinted by the transparency, I'm going to just make it black and white. So I'll delete this middle flag. I'll select the bottom one. And I'm going to make that black. Why am I doing that? Well, because the bottom of the ramp is the birth of the particle. And the top of the ramp is the death of the particle. So if I want the particles to start off as being visible, in Maya terminology, that's no transparency, or black in the transparency channel. Value of 0 equals no transparency equals fully opaque. As I want it to fade out over time, that means I need to increase the transparency so that by death time, it will be fully transparent. So that means this swatch up here is going to be white. And I'll do a quick render of that to illustrate that the particles are fading out over time now. So that's a lot of fun, and that'll look great when it's animated with those particles fading out. And I think we're ready now to add some glow. So we want to select the shader node. So I might need to go up even further in the shader tree, all the way to the top, to that shader node. And 
in here you will find glow intensity. So I'm just going to turn that up all the way to 1 and do another rendering. And now you'll see I've got magic fairy dust glowing. To get a little bit better control over that, I will go into the Hypershade window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. And I will find Shader Glow 1 in the materials. Shader Glow 1 is another default shader that's always there and can't be deleted or renamed. And it controls all of the glow intensity attributes in your Maya scene. There's only one shader glow node. You cannot create another one. And the only way you can vary the look of the glow across different objects is by assigning them different materials and changing their glow intensity. So I'll select shader glow one and that will display its attributes in the attribute editor. And in fact, I'm gonna copy this attribute editor tab off to its own window because it's very easy to select another object in the scene and then lose these attributes. So I'm going to copy tab down here at the bottom of the attribute editor. That opens it up in a permanent window and then I can close some of these others like the hypershade. In here, the first thing I want to do is turn off auto exposure because that's going to cause the intensity to flicker with each different frame. So I'm turning off auto exposure. There are two different glows in one here. There's glow and halo. They're basically the same, they just overlap. And I'm actually going to just shut the halo one off by choosing none, just to simplify our work and do a rendering. So now I've got very strong, bright glow. I'll go into the glow attributes and adjust things like the intensity and the spread. Intensity will cause it to be even brighter. How about I'll turn down the spread to perhaps a very low value, like 0 0.01, press enter. And now I've got very bright, intense spots that are almost white. I've also got a star that'll add some magic to this. I can increase the star level even more, perhaps. And maybe a little bit more spread. And it gets pretty magical pretty quickly. You'll see there's a rotation attribute here to play with. You can have a lot of fun with it. I don't want it to overload my scene too much. Maybe I'll bring the intensity down. You can also bring the color down too, if you like. I think I like it better turned up. But that's a basic introduction to working with Shader Glow. You can play with that to your heart's content. And once again, I'm going to save my work. File, Save, Scene As, and I'm up to version 6.